Good Sunday morning, Sunday morning blessings, Sunday morning blessings. Y'all, hello everybody. I'm in great spirits this morning because the Lord has given me the breath of life this morning and another chance to get up and praise him and come in and share something with you today. Today, I'm not going to do like I normally do the sermon notes. I'm going to read something to you because I feel like something is going on. And I think that uh, this is important that I read this. I read this myself and um, I was richly blessed. I want to read this and, and hopefully it will help you also. Now I've broken my glasses, excuse me. So I'm going to have to hold my glasses up until I can get me another pair of reading glasses. Let's, let's get this reading. It's called, There Is No Turning Back. There is no turning back. The scripture of reference is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. There is no turning back. A little boy in Sunday school heard the story of how Lot's wife looked back towards Sodom and turned into a pillar of salt. And we know this is when God destroy, destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. That's nothing, he said. Last week when my mother was driving down the street, she looked back and turned into a telephone pole. Seriously, God says, if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Every pilot knows there is a point of no return. The runway has all been used up. It's fly or die. In Hebrews chapter 11, we find a list of ordinary people who in the worst of times refuse to turn back. Let me say that one again. In Hebrews chapter 11, we find a list of ordinary people who in the worst of times refuse to turn back. That's your blessing. The Bible says if they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back, but they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Here's the score. If you're beginning your walk with God, Satan will use every trick in the book to get you off track. If you're in the middle of your walk with God, he will try to tell you that your life doesn't count. Don't believe him. Satan is a liar. And if you're nearing the end of your walk with God, he will try to discourage you by highlighting all your faults and failures. Don't buy what Satan is selling. He's a liar. Instead, stand on this scripture. I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Wow, there is no turning back. So I just wanted to stress that this morning. There is no turning back. Right now, like it says, if you're in the beginning of your walk with God, if you're in the middle or the end, Satan will try to come in and he will try to get you off track and keep you off track and derail you. But like God says, there is no turning back. He has pleasure. God has pleasure when we keep going and seeking him. All right. That was so important because I read that the other day and it really touched me. And, and I like this part where it says the ordinary people in Hebrews chapter 11, ordinary people like us. When they went through the worst of times, okay, that's your footprint right there. The Bible tells you everything. There's a reference for everything. And like I said, I love when it says when ordinary people went through the worst of times, they did not turn back. And it's also in that Hebrews chapter 11, it says by faith. And it covers the list of people that range from everybody. So I encourage you to read it. So do not turn back. There is no turning back. Keep going in your walk with the Lord. There is a reward at the end. All right. I love you. And I just want to drop one last tidbit. 
I am starting a series on depression. It is the holiday season. Even if you are not an emotional person, sometimes when the holidays come in, we feel lonely. You know, we see other people with their families, their pets, their, you know, friends. You know, everybody is just in that that uh, holiday season. You know, we're celebrating the birth of the Lord and we're just all, you know, just feeling like we need to be together. And we do. And so I want to talk about um, depression because even when it's not the holidays, we sometimes go through a depression. Ever since 2020 happened, um, a lot of us have gone through a depression. And sometimes we don't even know. Uh, when I lost my daughter over a year ago, I went into an immediate deep depression. I mean, it was immediate. And I could not pull myself out. Um, I could even see it in my face myself. It's like I was looking from the outside, you know, at somebody else, but God. So I'm starting this, uh, series on depression. You are not going to believe when I go over some of the readings and when I give you the scripture text, that's why I say God gives you everything you need in that Bible. So if somebody comes at you and says, you don't know that, or that's not of the Lord, it's in the Bible. And you're going to be very, very, very interested interested in the characters or not the characters, but the people in the Bible that we're going to go over that experience depression and the remedy for the depression. And it's, it's so, I'm getting so excited right now. I can't wait to start, um, putting these up because it's just like us modern day time. When we read the people of the Bible that were going through depression and what helped them, and we already know what helped them, but it's going to be some other things thrown in there too. So stay tuned and start looking for my series on depression. All right, I'm feeling good, y'all. I'm feeling some blessings coming. I want you to have a wonderful, blessed Sunday. Give God the thanks, and let's pray for everybody that it was in the tornadoes that went through, I believe, six states. There's been a lot of devastation, and like I said, right here at the holidays and stuff, too, Satan is trying to do a lot of attacks to throw us all off. Let's pray for those involved in the tornadoes today because it could be us tomorrow. All right, everybody, I love you, and be blessed.